If you saw my review video with a flip last week, you may have been underwhelmed with the stock firmware, such as the RetroArch menus being in Chinese, for example. Now, I did show you how to fix some of those issues, but people seemed interested in MinUI, so I thought I'd show you how to install it on the flip today. MinUI is a free custom firmware that uses a very simplified interface, so you don't have to go messing around with menus or anything like that. You can just go ahead and jump into your games really quickly, but it does have its limitations where it supports older games up to PlayStation 1. And yes, the DualShock control controls do work on PlayStation with the joysticks. There are some extras you can add like Pico 8 that also work with the sticks. So if you're a fan of playing newer systems such as Dreamcast or N64 on the MiU Flip right now, you may want to stick with the stock firmware for now until a more advanced custom firmware comes out. Here's the MinUI GitHub page. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see like a preview of the menus and it talks about different features that it has. And there's a little blue link that says grab the latest version here. But before we grab that, I'm just going to scroll down so you can see the support consoles. If you download the base version, you'll get all these emulators here, even PlayStation. But if you download extras, then you get all these emulators here as well. There's a bunch of supported devices, but you can see here that the MiU Flip has been added. So let's grab the latest version. When you download it, they recommend that you look over the README text file so that you know everything that it can do, but I'll be doing a lot of that in this video. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see the base version and the extras if you want it. I'm going to install both in this video. And they're pretty small files, so it shouldn't take long. So you just have to unzip these files, and it won't take long at all. It took me about 30 seconds to extract those. I'm going to delete these zip files because we don't need them anymore. If we look in our MinUI base folder, on the bottom there's your README file. It says for the MiU Flip, you need to copy the MiU355 folder and the MinUI zip file without unzipping. So when we get our SD card ready, we're going to grab the MiU355 folder, the MinUI zip folder, but you're also going to need your BIOS files folder, your ROMs files folder for your game, Games and your saves folder for your saves. If we go back and look in our extras folder, basically you just need to copy all these over to your SD card as well, and then you'll have those extra emulators. You will have to bring your own files such as BIOS and ROMs. Now before we install this, there's something very important I have to talk about. When you pop your SD card out, for the love of God, do not use this SD card. This SD card is garbage and it'll most likely break on you. Make sure you use a reliable SD card like these. I have a Samsung here and a SanDisk. I'm going to go ahead and use the Samsung for this video because this SanDisk actually belongs to my SP. In addition to using a high quality SD card, you may not want to use the SD card reader that came with the MiU Flip because I've had people commenting that MiU sends these SD card readers out with devices and they fry SD cards because they're very cheaply made. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my reliable SD card reader and you should do something similar. You need to format your SD card to FAT32. So I'm just going to use a free software called Rufus, but you can use whatever you want to format your card. You can see that it picked up my SD card, but it's asking me to pick an ISO image, but I don't want to do any of this stuff. I just want to have it non-bootable so that I can format it. And down below, I'll just click my file system and select FAT32 and say start. It'll pop up with a warning here, just ignore that. It's just formatting your cards so we can bring our files over. Once that's ready, you can close it. So on the left side, we have our files ready to be dragged over and on the right is our empty SD card that we just formatted, the FAT32. So just go into your base folder. We're gonna select our BIOS folder, MiU355, our ROMs, save, and MinUI zip file. So bring those over. And then I'm going to drag on the optional extras folders. So I'm just going to select all those and bring those over. And that's basically it for the files we need to install MinUI. But there's no BIOS files and there's no ROMs on this yet. And it is a little bit particular on how you add these. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So starting with our ROMs folder, you can see these are all your emulator folders. And this is where you put your games, which is easy enough. But what you should know is MinUI basically pays attention to whatever's in these brackets here. So you don't want to edit these brackets. Just make sure you leave these here. You can rename these whatever you like. So for example, for Sony PlayStation, it has PS in brackets. I'm going to leave that alone. But I can rename this to PlayStation if I want. You can rename these files or whatever you like as long as you keep the name in the brackets you'll be fine. When you add BIOS files the naming is very particular so when I go in here you can see all your different folders for your emulators. In your readme text document under BIOS it tells you where you put your files so for example for PlayStation it's under BIOS and then PS for PlayStation 
and the BIOS file's names are case sensitive. So for example, when you add PlayStation, you can see it's all lowercase. If you're having issues, it might be because your BIOS file's names are wrong. So that's basically it. I've already gone ahead and added my BIOS files and my ROMs. I can't tell you where to get these files, but they're pretty easy to find. But you can see under PlayStation, I have my BIOS file here and it's in lowercase, just like they said. But before we boot this up on the MiU Flip, I'm gonna show you something else that's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you how to make an X-Men games collection. All you have to do is make a new folder and call it collections. And in here, I'm gonna make a text file. I'll just call it X-Men Games. I'm just going to add three X-Men Games just to show you, but I'll go ahead and type slash ROMs with a capital R, and then slash. And I know my first game is going to be Sega Genesis, so I'll go back out to my ROMs folder, and then find Sega Genesis. And I'm going to copy the name of this folder, and after this slash, I'll just paste the name of my Sega Genesis folder, and then make another slash, and I'll just find my X-Men game. So I'll go all the way down to the bottom, and then I can see X-Men right here. But make sure you copy everything, even the extension at the end. So I'm gonna copy that and then paste that in the X-Men text file. And there we go. That's my first game added to this list. I got my ROMs folder, Sega Genesis, and then X-Men. But I'm actually gonna add X-Men 2 as well. So all I have to do is copy my directory so it knows to look in the Sega Genesis folder. And I'll paste that on the next line. Now I just have to add my game. So I'll copy X-Men 2 and make sure I copy everything here. And then I'll paste the name of the game here with the extension at the end. And now both of these games will show up in my collection. But let's add a third X-Men game from a different system. I'm gonna add an X-Men game from Game Boy Advance. So again, all I have to do is just type slash ROMs with a capital R and then slash. And I'll go find my Game Boy Advance folder and copy the name of that and paste it here. Make sure you add another slash before the game. And I'll just go into my Game Boy Advance folder, go all the way down to the bottom, and I found X2 Wolverine's Revenge. So I'm gonna make sure that I copy everything here and just paste it at the end of that. Now we have three X-Men games and they're from different systems under one collection called X-Men Games. So we'll see this collection when we boot up the system. Just make sure to save. Let's boot this SD card up in the MiU Flip and I'll show you some helpful settings. Now that we have this all set up, we can put it back in the MiU Flip and start it up for the first time. It's gonna go through some processes here, just let it do its thing. When it first boots up, it just has this very simple menu. You can see the collections we just added and all of our systems. So if I go into Game Boy, you can see all the games right here. It's very simple. If I hit the menu button, it just gives me some information on the release. All your settings you can set up while you're in the games themselves. But I'll just show you down the list. It's just the emulators that we added. And at the very bottom, there's a tool section, but there's not much in here. You can set a clock if you want to. There's a file explorer and there's an input menu. So when you go into the input menu, it just basically basically shows you your buttons. You'll notice that your joysticks do not detect here. If I go into my collections folder, I can select my X-Men games list that I made, and you can see the different games that I added. So if I just go into X-Men, it'll open up X-Men for Sega Genesis. So it's pretty cool. You can make like customized lists for whatever you want. While we're in this game, I'll show you some custom options. So if I hit the menu button, you can see that you can continue, save, load, and options. Under options, you have a bunch of things you can choose from here, like your front end. So if I go in here, you can change your screen scaling, such as aspect, full screen, or your native resolution. And it describes what they do down here. You can change your different screen effects, you probably won't have any issues on the MiU Flip, but your screen sharpness can affect your performance. So if one of your games wasn't performing well, you could change it to like a soft screen sharpness or sharp or crisp. And you may be able to save some battery with CPU speed. Right now it's at normal. You can put it on performance or put it on power save. I'd recommend using this on everything you can so you can save some battery life. And something else that's pretty cool is you can change your fast forward speed. So right now it's at four times. It goes down as low as two, but you can go all the way up to eight times. Under your emulator option, you can turn things on such as frame skip or overclocking, for example. And your controls are really easy to set up. If you go in here and you want to change A to be like the B button, for example, you just tap A and then hit B, and now it's changed to something else. I'll just change that back to Y. And I just want to show you something with the PlayStation controls. You can see that the joystick and the D-pad are both working to turn the car. But if I go down to options and then emulator, if I scroll down, you can see that there's a shortcut for toggling your DualShock off and on. 
So if I hit L1 and R1 and select at the same time, I could turn my joysticks off. Also, you could turn off your rumble effects if you find that really annoying. But basically, if you're playing a game and you don't want your joysticks available, all you have to do is hit L1, R1, and then select. So if I'm driving around, you can see that my D-pad still works just fine, but my joysticks won't work at all, and I'll crash into a wall. You can also set up in-game shortcuts, which is the hotkeys that I showed you in my review video. So if I go in here, I can basically just set these up to whatever I want. And you can set these up to be single button or a combination of buttons. If you remember my review video, I like to use the menu button and then hit something else to do a shortcut. So for save state, I can hit A to set it up and hit menu and R1. Load state, I can say menu and L1. If I want to reset my game, I like to set it up as menu and select. Save and quit, I can set it up as menu and start. I'm going to set up cycle scaling and cycle effects as L3 and R3. I'll show you what they do in a minute. And you can toggle fast forward, so if you want to fast forward through text in a game or something, you can turn that on. So I'm just going to set that up as menu and R2. And that's it. So if I go back, I can say save changes. And you can save for the entire Sega Genesis console, or just for this game, or restore it to default. So I'm going to set it up for all my Sega Genesis games. So just to show you a shortcut, say I jump Gambit over here on this branch, and I duck this, and then I shoot that guy, and I want to save it right here, I can just hit Menu and R1, and then it'll be saved. So say I go down here and I die or something, I can just hit Menu and L1, and I can load back to my save. So I just opened Game Boy Advance, and I want to show you what those L3 and R3 shortcuts were. I set L3 up as Cycle Scaling, and I set R3 up as cycle effect, so that's like your screen effect. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Right now there's no effect on. If I click R3, now it has scan lines. And if I click R3 again, it has like a grid system of lines. So it's pretty cool that you can set your screen effects up just by clicking a button like that. And I set up save and quit as menu and start, so I'll just press that right now. And then we're back to the main menu. Another cool feature is if you hold on the menu button, you can now change your brightness. So I just have to hit the volume button down and up while I'm holding menu. This wasn't working for me right away. I just rebooted the device and then it worked just fine. And you can see that a recently played category now exists. So if you go in here, you can see we were just playing X-Men and I was trying out Twisted Metal earlier. Also, if you're on a game that has a save state, you can open the game and restart everything. Or you can press X to resume right back in the game. If this device falls asleep and shuts off, or if you shut it off yourself, it'll save exactly where you are, and then when you turn it back on, it'll load back up to where you are. So let's just try that. I'll just hold on the power button and shut this off completely. It'll say that a quick save was created. And when I turn this back on, it should boot up right into X-Men where I left off. It may take a minute to boot up, but you can see it just booted up right where we left off. On the bottom left it says power sleep, so if I tap on the power button I can just put this to sleep and it'll sleep for 2 minutes and then it'll shut off. If your device is awake, this will go to sleep automatically after 30 seconds. So yeah, MenUI is a very simplified system for people who just want to stick to older games. Check out my full review of the MiU Flip if you haven't seen it already. I hope you found this helpful, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.